Welcome to the Ether. Today is Friday, December 2nd, 2022. Today on the Ether, part two of the two part Rack FM number nine, Dub Dub G O Dub G A, hosted by Robo, the mayor of motherfucking Rackville. Let's go. Let's take a listen. Okay, or not. Listen, we're trying, we're trying to have a band's fucking hell. I mean, Rama went quiet. Rama would have just got rid of it. Like, you can't have a conversation with this man. I was trying to like explain the definition of clueless and bands is coming in like street smart. Like, I know what you mean, Robo. Like, bands, you know what I mean. We talked about the intelligence types. We know he's fucking really clever, right? He is implicit in the crime, no doubt. It's quite evident. But last night, when he had to deal with the fundamental basics of fucking kids who have got street cred, or and who common are, sense. Like, That's the better common, word. Like, yeah, common sense. Exactly. He's grown up in this, like, fallacy protected little bubble. You can tell he's a little bubble kid, man. I bet he was on the tit until about seven years old. That's why he's so fucking fat, isn't it? SBF. Now, Jimmy, I'll bring you back up, mind. Is he gone or not? I hope he's still here. Like, I'll bring him back up, but he needs to I learn. I somebody kicked him out. Yeah. He said, I just got kicked from the show, but maybe he, he didn't. He just kicked himself because he didn't he know what to say. He always says that. The dude always kicks himself out when shit gets... He's like, I got kicked out. <laughs> shut uh, up, you big baby. Up. Stop it. <laughs> you know what? You know what, though, guys? Listen, there's so many cool people here I'd rather listen to. Look in the room, right? We've got Homestead, Home Pleb, sorry. Uh, Sheldon, we've got Brasco, we've got Lord C. I'll, I'll, I'll get everybody up, right? Rick, so, do you have this. any news? You got any, uh, like, I like how sometimes you come up and you have, like, hey, I got some news to chat about. Breaking you got a, news. You got a little news? Breaking news. <laughs> it didn't happen. Wait, that voice came from Lil' Gang, right? Or am I tripping? Fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. Has he been recording? Has he been recording Red Gang there? Is that Gaines recording Red Gang or something or not? Is that what I heard <laughs> wrong? Or what did you hear there? It's that Gaines recording a red gang and then playing them back in all way. He's a right cunt, Gaines. <laughs> oh, my God. Every time we invite fucking Jimmy up, oh. it ends up like this. It ends up like this every time. Yeah. Sick of it. Fucking it wasn't even that bad. It was, he, was, he was on his best behavior, in my opinion. Have you read the fucking entire Wikipedia? Oh, my gosh. It was interesting. Whatevers. We all, we all bring a little something. It wasn't bad. Bands, it's not about that. It's a fact they can't like appreciate the fact that someone else is like gonna like want to contribute at a particular point in time. If you're interrupting, there's a reason you're fucking doing it. And like you listen for the first five seconds, and then you're like, "Nah, mate, that introduction's wrong." And you're like, "Right, okay, wait a minute, wait, I'll finish." Or you'll be like, "All right, okay, go on," you know. Like he's got no social fucking etiquette skills. And I was trying and trying and trying there, man. And he's trying my fucking patience now. That's why we needed Sajoshi uh, Nakabozo, the second year silent in the room. <laughs> I've been practicing saying his name. Like, I've been off spaces <laughs> trying to say his name because I want to be like Satoshi Nakabozo, the second J is silent. Like, I've been practicing because <laughs> it was really hard for me to say. Like, I was getting tongue tied. <laughs> Hey, hey, darling, can you do me a favor, man? While, while we're live, can you do me a favor? What's your, uh, what was your final, well, not final, but what was the figure on last week's uh, Bare Bones of Web 3? Fucking hell, when I looked like 24, was later, you were like 900 and something. You must have went well. 22, I think. I don't know. Something like that. You know what? You haven't gone past the grand yet. You haven't gone past, oh, I'm going to shill that shit and get you past the grand. Um, is, that, is that because yeah. of Matic or what? 
Why, why was that? That was a, that was a big I, number. I, that. I mean, the Matic guy, he's pretty... I mean, Dave, Dave, uh, the, the blog guy, he's pretty popular, and he has a show that he has every day for, like, Monday or like Monday through Thursday, and it's, like, a two-hour show every day that he just kind of chills and okay. talks with people. So he's a pretty chill guy. I, I like that Dave guy. Okay. And he re, retweeted, yeah? He obviously retweeted, right? Oh, I like that. I like him. He's British, yeah? Of course I like them, yeah. Um, hey, listen, I pinned something to the top and it's actually a uh, secret Santa. So if you guys want nominate, want to nominate somebody for um, a gift from Space Skellies, you can just kind of write in there that, you know, I would like to nominate, you know, Berserker or Homestead or Brosco or whatever to receive um, to receive a, a gift. Oh, and so we'll just um, we'll, pick, we'll pick certain stories, like certain people, like and the reasons why they say they should get it. And then we'll, we're going to send them. A gift. Yeah, oh, do Red Gang, do Red Gang, do Brasco, fuck Robo, fuck Shoebox. Oh my God, Christmas has ended for me. Hey, Benz, I got a question too. for you. Um, yes? Are we, uh, can I reach out to you for some gifts? We're organizing a, a charity mint. Uh, all funds go to Angel. And uh, we're looking for, you know, projects that want to be part of it. I think Space Gal is yeah. a good one. Yes, I'll offer it the racks as well, but I'm not expecting anything. No. Well, dude, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, hey. I was just going to say, wait, dude, dude, wait, dude, wait, wait, wait. Because it's a charity, hey, because it's a charity, we wouldn't expect uh, anything from you for taking our idea. But, dude, we started this charity thing like two and a half months ago. So oh I would boy. not, I oh wouldn't boy. do that. Yeah, would I not invest in charity as well. These no, no, have been going on for a while, my No, friend. no, we're we're the first, we're the first, <laughs> the first, we're the first Cosmos NFT to do what we what we did with it. Are you kidding me? Back on Terra, we gave over two million to Angel. Not 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 our project, but like a few of them and, and projects. Well, dude, of, so. Terra's dead. Terra's dead. Terra's dead. <laughs> wait a minute, though. Wait a minute, Berserker. Wait a minute. Sorry, sir. Uh, dude, don't take the piss out of what we did with that show. We put that on the map, right? Your man gains tatted up their PFP. What the, the, the charity guys, thing? Guys, we appreciate y'all catching up. We appreciate y'all catching up and coming <laughs> our ideas. Fair enough. But don't forget who, hey, don't forget who did everything first. Like literally everything. All right. All right. You did it we first. Are. If it makes you happy, I, I won't fight it. Um, say so. Can you send me like a little DM about the the thing, or yeah. do I need to go into? Yeah, your, yeah it's gonna be up. really fun. It's gonna be really cool. Hey, while I'm at it, I'll I'll share the details with y'all. I guess uh, maybe I'm not allowed, but who cares? No, no, no. Wait, 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 before you do, Rick, and before you do, I think you should go on Bands' show on Monday, though. If you if you're free, Bands, have you got a guest for Monday? You should, you should um, get yeah, your I have IBC um, IBC friends, but Rick Gang is more more than welcome to come over and tour. Like at the end, we have. If I have, we have some I extra time you can kind of chat about it and uh, you can because we have updates we have time for updates so if oh, Rick I, 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 to give an update yeah, i've been on the show a few times uh, it was, it was, so, it was well, i mean I, I i listen to it i listen to it no i mean like like okay so like you know how i do we do the news and then we do the crypto uh, market then we have a spot that we do updates so like we'll say okay so new and skellies we did a validator we have this going on and then if you would like um in that time you can come in and talk about what you um what's going on with red gang like your your update what's for what's going, going on for red you gang. i think we know what's going on with red gang you know what i mean like the this well, little, I, I, this, I just um, want to show my Charity thing, okay, please. Um, so <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, you to... can chill your sh yeah, come in and do that. I think that would be awesome this Monday. Okay, fine, I'll do it on Monday. So, you get you don't want me to do it now. No, no, you no, can do it now, too. You can do it, do it now as well. All right, right, right. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. So, basically, okay, you mint the gift and you mint it on December 22nd, and you don't know what's in the box. So it's just like Christmas. You get the it's just like our barns, right? So you get to mint the gift, and then on December twenty fifth, you can choose to open your box and open your gift or not. And uh, yeah, so and and you know inside the gifts there'll be some cash prizes and some NFTs and things like that. But but the whole concept is kind of around opening and 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 trading the gifts before you open them. 
uh, and all the funds and proceeds like royalties and, and you know, it's going to be a very cheap mint, but the mint uh, proceeds are going to go to Angel. So so that's basically the whole gist of it. it I, I just like the mechanics of it all, of having this gift, and then you have to wait to Christmas until you open it, and then you can choose to open it or not. That's it. Your man's feeding where? Hey, hey, as long as your man's feeding stray dogs, listen, you know, when you're helping Angel out, as, as well as many other causes, you're helping something close to me heart, right? We got Michael on board in record time. Anyone that does anything like that's going to help out, you know, Angel, the crew, et cetera, et cetera, right, dude, I can't get behind it more. Uh, and I love it. I can't wait to hear if anyone's got any, uh, if anyone's got any, like, getting rugged at Christmas stories. We'll get your man up, uh, Sir Joshi. Oh, Sir Joshi's in the room. He I'm go going up. to step down, sure. jump into bed and listen, because it's okay. half past one. So, okay, bro. thank you all. I'll, I'll be listening in. Take care. Have you got Looper in the morning? Rama, have you got I Looper in the morning? Indeed. Yeah, I've oh, got Looper yeah. in the morning, and then I've got the Juno Growth Fund team member call, and then oh, we're going to a party. Oh, spicy. The, I the love Looper the puzzle people. passed, right? Like, that, that thing passed? It, it's done? Mm-hmm. Just, it's got days left of voting, brother. I've got plenty of time for this why, shit. Why do you care? Why do you care, well, Rekka? No, I just, you know, I, hey, I Are followed you, you know. Are you on the payroll? You know, oh, you know. he's on the payroll. I said, dude, you be I'm careful in public. Be careful in public. Not, <laughs> should I not be following governance? Should I not be involved? Spicy. Spicy. It's a Joshi. It's a Joshi. Not a, not a bozo. The second, jo- uh, second J is silent. How are you, sir? Oh, you know. Just waking up, doing my clown routine, talking to my clown friends about clown governance and clown <laughs> companies doing clown ass shit. Same <laughs> shit, different clown ass day. Same clown ass people. How are y'all doing this morning? Uh, I'm all the better for wait. I've been waiting for you for fucking hours. I've been calling for that Joshi for like the last two hours. I'm like, get Finn in. Get, where is he? Where is he? Where? We had Jimmy yeah, I actually too. turned my phone off this time because I've the last few days you've woken me up at like four <laughs> in the morning to come listen to clown ass people talk about dumb clown ass shit. So I figured I'm going to get some sleep tonight. I'm going to turn the, the ringer off. I'm going to turn the whole phone off. I took the battery out, broke the phone in half, just like Jack Bauer showed me to, how to. And uh, yeah, I got a full 12. I'm feeling refreshed, <laughs> rejuvenized, ready to take on a new day full of clown ass shit in this you know clown ass space full of clown ass companies trying to pretend to build <laughs> clown ass shit for other clown ass fucking people. Let's go. <laughs> Do you know, you know what you missed? You missed your man Jake coming on and fucking going wild. I had to leave and go to work, mate. I was devastated. Mm-hmm. He was still going two hours later. Uh, Jake Hartnell. Like just came in and he's like, uh, oh, this shit. like let's overthrow the fuck. Like there's some think, uh, Maybe the end, maybe the end of the room. Like the French Revolution. <laughs> I think that's Rama's man, but yeah, I, I appreciate the sentiment. So what do you guys think about the that quote up top? Uh, I kind of I think this is an interesting discussion. I, I'm I'm sad that Jimmy never got to share his opinion and danced around about it. About but... the kings? Well, well I think, uh, you know, was he trying to explain it in some like religious nonsense yes. clown ass shit? Yeah, yeah yes. that makes sense. He's a so, fucking clown. Reckon, reckon, can I give Finn some context, right? Uh, so, Finn, uh, this was like what Jake said today, like obviously about we need like no kings, right? He went on like a few rants, yeah. Uh, but, dude, listen, the, the a hot topic of conversation today, like a really, really hot topic. Uh, was about the uh, communication subdo and about like the performance of recent uh, members, uh, what happened on the spaces with you and Tank and this person the other night, how it's basically oh, yeah. like yeah, basically just like a total loss of credibility, like shocking performance. I mean, I was like time stamping shit for people, right? I'm like, like I'm like saying to people, guys, please, if I've got this wrong, if this cunt is not a, like a snake oil salesman, please stop me and tell me like where I got things wrong because like my bullshit detector is off the fucking charts right now. Which cunt is that? Uh, Which cunt? 
You take the high road and I'll take the low road and we'll meet in the middle. Na, 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 na. Oh yeah, Often that's clown ass shit. That's see <laughs> if we've learned anything from from Game of Thrones, we've learned that you don't need kings, you get lords, and then people just start cutting each other's heads off and eating each other. So you need some sort of leadership. But eventually, that leadership always turns into the thing it hates. It's, it's a very cyclical thing. So there, there's really no way around it except to further build this AI creation and hope that it finds us a better way. Well, Perhaps well, 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 well. Out of this space is today, my hallowed friend, my dear brother in arms. Out of this space is today, I gather, because I wasn't there. I mean, I only instigated shit. I mean, I lit the fire, I put in the nest, the receipts from six months ago, then I ran away like a good arsonist does, right? Uh, it was uh, mentioned, dude, that there very, very soon will be a draft proposal uh, up on Commonwealth proposing additional members to the DAO. And if accepted, once that is through the mechanics, then the next stage will be to put a a signal proposaling up to get rid of some other members of the uh, communication DAO who might have overstayed their welcome, overstepped the mark, basically took the piss and just been a fucking useless, worthless fucking... Names. Give me fuck names. Sorry, sorry. Like the whole DAO? I mean, do you, do you need individual names? It's a whole no. clown-ass group. Right in clown ass uh, governance, passing where? clown ass votes on a clown ass token that's going to zero. Let's go. People's already been mentioned about like, you know, who who people would be like comfortable with like putting up and stuff like that, right? I've said I'd be there. Be me. I would be there for a non non advisory uh, editorial role, pro bono. Like I'm I'm all in for it, me. I'll 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 be I'll be in the background. I'll check everything before it goes out, free of fucking charge for the culture. Just a fucking show that raccoons always fucking do things different. We always change the fucking game, the system. We're the instigators of all the fucking shit you're seeing now, man, over the last fucking four months, man. Get all the dirty washing out in public. Get all the dirty linen out in public and let's start again. Let's, let's refresh, guys. Restart, right? And let's fucking draw a line in the sand, say all that's behind us, give Takumi his fucking money, get rid of him, whatever we need to do, right? And let's just fucking start again. By the way, I want to give a shout out to my dear friend, Mr. Signal. I'm not going to dox him in here. He's just jumped in the room. I listened to his interview with Tank the other day. And uh, Signal, Mr. Mr. B, uh, dude, I'm really sorry about what happened to Canada. I know they're on the way home and zero points and, and fucking nothing. Like we don't before. care, man. Oh, Nobody I plays soccer here. Nobody. Uh, well, I was, oh, he's a fan. Yeah, he's and I don't fan. even think the Canadians care because they're so polite. They were probably that whole bus yeah, ride home. They were just like, "Oh, sorry, sorry guys, sorry, sorry, I missed that goal. Sorry, I'm so sorry, sorry guys. Wow, I'll play better next time, eh? Sorry." A boot. Um. Wow. Yeah. Let's we're, go we're to the Jose. To be part of the whole journey, the experience. It was, you know. A memorable event and we partaked in it so canada is very happy and proud even though listen, we got zero points listen dude i'm gonna say this right i was out and he's come up as a speaker i was out with with mr mr signal the night of the first game i think was the first game against croatia yeah might have been yeah yeah, yeah. We, we were on the soul we had a laugh hello buddy hello signal Okay, so before you move on to more shit that I really don't care about, I just want to make it clear that I've spent the last, like, 40 years of my life trying to avoid politics and governments and things like that, only to find myself thrust right into the middle of governance and politics in a different world. And I, I can't tell you how fitting my clown emoji PFP is right now. I've seen it, I've seen it, but you also want to remember when the communication sub conversation was on the go today, your name was one of the fucking top of the list. No, take my name off that shit. I don't want no part of any <laughs> governance, voting, politicking, scamming, clowning. No, 
No, no. Sean? Just you pay me to record y'all shit that. or fuck off. That, that's what yeah, I got to say. The people to Play me the out. There we go. I'm juggling on my way out. I love you got <laughs> Wow, you got to love Sir Joshi, wait. He does like that many spaces, so like there's probably like a space going on now. And he's like, he just jumps in and out and in and out. Uh, tanks come up, but uh, wait a minute. Uh, hello, Mr. B. Hello, Signal. How are you doing, sir? Hey, man. Doing well. I, uh, it's, it's early morning here, so I haven't been able to, to join any of your, your spaces recently, you know, because it's the time zone sucks. But uh, it's, it's good, to, good to hear from you. Are you, are you enjoying the cold? Or are you missing the heat? Yeah, it snowed like as soon as I got back. So I had a nice welcome gift of, you know, like uh, shoveling the sidewalks and things like that. It's great. But I mean, my dog loves it. She's like a, a husky cross. So it's awesome getting out in the snow with her. Yeah, I've seen your dog. Right? Absolutely beautiful. Dude, you know something, though? I, I can only imagine going from like the tropical heat, like over to the snow. Oh, my God. What after like a month? What a like refreshing change, man! The, the air, do you know, the very air that you breathe. The oh, one yeah, thing I awesome. oh, dude, the one thing I noticed when I went back to England after a few years was like the air was just so fresh, and I couldn't believe it. I was like talking to people, like, "Can you believe how fresh this air is?" I was breathing; it was beautiful. And then you come back here, and it's like, fuck, that you know, the two point five, whatever it is, a particle shit you've got going on. You're like, oh, fucking hell. Anyway, Signal, I'm glad you made your flight. Did you have a good night in Bangkok? Eh? We had a good laugh that night, you and I. <laughs> yeah, man, it was an awesome night out. Really fun. And uh, I thank you again for being such a gracious host. Dude, I can't believe, like, we're all just sitting on the front, like, talking to people, like, I'm just bringing them in, and then them sh- putting the shutters down when the football was on. And we were like, oh, all right. And your man's like, get the pints in for everyone. It's like, dude, yeah. You, you, you got a good glimpse of like what like Bangkok can be like, like for people. Can you remember the guy who'd only just got off the airplane? He'd like been in Thailand like 12 hours, his first time or something, that little American dude at the end of the night. You remember him, yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. He asked me, he said, he said I, heard, I heard weed's like legal here. Where is it all? And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Took him 10 meters, like, past the bar. And I'm like, dude, look at this stall. And he's like, everything there was to buy. And he's like, oh. And then five minutes later, he must have followed me back. And he comes in just walking in the bar, smoking a big one. I'm like, oh, my God. It was good, a good night, dude. Good night. Nice bit of food. Nice bit of conversation. Uh, Dickie, Dickie's a nice guy, yeah? Dickie's a nice kid. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he seemed like a really nice guy. I've warned him about uh, giving his phone number to those bloody waitresses, though. I've warned him about that, man. He needs to stop that, you know. <laughs> uh, by the way, Signal, uh, thanks for coming up. I did enjoy your interview. Uh, with, uh, honestly, dude, that was a really, really good interview. Like, thanks, like, such a good, like, inquisitive. Like, I love when he was, like, at the beginning, I don't know that much about the project. Like, I hope you're going to explain it all. That was a fascinating uh, conversation, that between you two, especially when you got into like the art and the. I don't want to derail the night because we are having a bit of a laugh now. Jimmy's gone, but uh, if anyone guys hasn't watched it, thanks like latest video he did interview was with uh, Signal Mr C Mr S, and it was so good. Like it's it's really really worth going watching just for like to to really figure out. I think Signal's uh, a project conceptually like i've struggled with for a bit and and even when you were explaining like about the radio signals and everything at the time he was like what and, and like through tank's inquisitiveness i like kind of figured out like i was like ah right okay does that make sense uh signal yeah yeah for sure i mean it's probably not a good thing about our project that it takes <laughs> it takes like an hour to explain it um but it's uh it, it was an awesome interview from my perspective and like yeah it was i was so appreciative of the opportunity to uh to chat and yeah i mean uh tank you're like a, a great interviewer is very comfortable and uh and fun appreciate it man you guys were you guys were a blast to interview 
very interesting uh, project, very innovative project. Uh, and I stand by everything I said during the interview, man. I, I got whitelist coming your way soon. Got whitelist coming your way soon, man. So I'm keeping one of them, by the way. One was mine. <laughs> Oh, I'm mean, guys. I missed the I missed the Jimmy conversation. I had to drop down oh. to go do some deadlifting. What 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 happened? Oh, tank, honest to God, I was trying. I was trying. Like from a, I mean, if if anyone in the world could tame Jimmy to the point where it's an adult conversation, you're probably gonna have like a fucking amazing conversation. Like if I when I was on the backpacking days, if I'd met him. And he was erratic face to face like that. Like y you can get someone to calm down. And like I I've had the most like ADHD, bipolar driven, like mad person that I've like wanted to get to know. And like, and you know, you just need to like get people to calm down. It's impossible to do that on a spaces when you've got no like visuals. Like, you know, if Jimmy we were. Doesn't, Jimmy doesn't yeah. want to, guys. He <laughs> fucking, he doesn't want to. Like he and he knows it. I don't know why. No, but I hope there's I hope there's hope in my heart that somebody can like just become like semi normal and not be such a cunt. If no, if I, I can, I if, agree. I think, like I said a million times, I think Jimmy is would have so much uh, value uh, to add to the space if he would just stay on point. But he doesn't. He chooses not to. Like he doesn't want to be safe. Anyway, so I didn't miss he, much. If his interruptions, even bands was asking him like, like I let it say the thing is I let them go for so long, and there was a point where they, like this audience were just going to lose the audience, and people were dropping out, and it's like, wait, Jimmy, you know, and you try to segue, it, and he hasn't got the intelligence to realise that for the benefit of the room, for the benefit of the spaces, there's a fucking segue for a reason, because new people have joined or other people have like left, people are missing chunks of conversations. You know, there's not many people that is going to jump in here and stay here for three, four, five hours, six hours, right? They're going to come in and out, right? And and Jimmy just hasn't got the intelligence to fucking realize that, like, Jimmy, there's a point where, you know, no, <laughs> everyone's going to fall asleep or leave. But, but he does, bro. Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. No, Jimmy's highly intelligent. It's like spectrum highly intelligent like fucking he knows exactly what he's doing when he's doing it he does not want to be saved it's exactly what it's all to plan man it's like uh yeah he, he, i mean I, isn't it isn't it a, a maturity thing more than anything uh that's my perspective at least i think back to like yeah. you know you're i don't know when you're 19 or, or younger you're at parties or something and you get cornered by uh some guy who thinks he's uh an intellectual and uh, he's not able to like actually engage in a conversation in a productive way, uh, and it's just kind of doing a bit, basically. That's, that's my perspective, at least. I, I think that uh, it's just a maturity thing, pretty much. And and let's kick into a man who always thinks uh, before he speaks. Uh, good morning, Sefi. Hello there. Hey guys, morning. Just kind of stopping by before work. What are you up to? Is this the subject is what Jimmy the Otter. <laughs> no, no, no. And me, we had it. No, we had Jake. We had Jake on his late night uh, spaces. So, like afternoon, uh, well, lunchtime, my time, we had like Jake on for a few hours. I wasn't privy to the whole thing, but the title is Rack FM, episode nine. <laughs> we need no kings, but for his words. And then, obviously, apparently, uh, Rec News, which I don't know if you, I, Sophie, have you heard of Rec News? You know who they are, yeah? Yeah, well, I watch their tweets and stuff. Yeah, it's, they're, looks like they're having some fun. <laughs> they're getting death threats, Sefi. They're getting death threats. So when, I'm going to send Winston over to, for them. Sort it out. Can't have that. Tongue in cheek, death Wait, threats, man. They're, they're getting what? Death threats? Getting death threats in the DMs, bro. Can you believe that? After like a week. It's absolutely disgraceful. I need to get, in, need to get in on that. Can, is it okay if I send some death threats? <laughs> <laughs> Be, go on, go on, send, send rec, rec news, a death threat, I dare you, for, for the culture. <laughs> he's typing, huh? He's, he's actually doing it. Oh, yeah, give me a minute. <laughs> minute. Hold on. He's like, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Have Lunked Out do one, too. Fuck it. 
we had the one of my funny we had the one of my favorite like recent like funniest accounts like Literally, if you don't wake up, like it's the first thing that I look for on the morning now. I'm like, fuck the news, the real news, or any of the group chats. Where's ref news? I'm straight in. It's Wait nuts. a minute, it's nuts, man. Wait, great uh, games. We know. Does anyone in the room? I hope you all follow ref news. Did anyone in the room spot Molly the Rack's tail? Come and Amanda's going to give me the thumbs down here. I know it's incoming. I'm watching. Did anybody see the wrecked news uh, tweet the other day? And like Molly's tail's coming out from under the desk. Like, <laughs> guys, if you saw it, oh my fucking God, we were dying games now. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. That's not, it wasn't right, dude. It wasn't right that they did Molly like that. <laughs> it was not right. <laughs> It was what you mean. It wasn't right. You know she's a right dude. skank. Dude, she's, she's a right skank. skank. <laughs> what do you mean she's our skank? She's Finn's, Finn's skank. Him and the Beedo are passing her around like I don't know what. Dude, where did she go? I thought she'd fucked off. She came back from nowhere when, when Wreck News popped up like. That's suspicious, that mind. Molly comes back, no. Hmm. She took a good break. She took a good break. <laughs> he was, uh, yeah, she was a little depressed and agitated. And I think this is when the whole Joe movement was happening. So it's a good thing she left. And now she's back. I can't even imagine what, like, Sefi's uh, death threats will be like. Come on. Red Gang, what do you think, Berserker? If you were Sefi and you'd write in a, like, write in a death threat, how would it sound? Dear Red like, Gang. There's like tourniquets and like flamethrowers involved and shit. <laughs> uh, like a little bit of gasoline, maybe, um, I don't know, some different types of knives and things. I don't know. The Red Gang should probably be like, especially, um, you know, they should get some very special death threats. Like really, we should sit there for like maybe an hour and like come up with a scheme to, you know, I don't know. So if he can ask you a personal question, uh, what's happening with your man, Bruce? Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not listening. I catch little things from time to time. Is he having a meltdown uh, over the merge, or is it all like bravado and <laughs> short raccoons? Like, no, no. I'm gonna ask because raccoons cause drama, but in the background, we're all like laughing and entertaining. And we're, we're always in the news cycle, like lunk, Wait. lunk, bell, obviously, you know. Is he melting? Yeah, is he melting down? Whole... No, 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 no. Um, there's this entire um, like there's this whole meme or whatever this ideology in the Luna Classic crowd that somehow it's like the Doquan bad, um, you know, Doquan abandoned Luna Classic, uh, and a part of their the ethos is sort of like the fight against. Terra or something but <laughs> it makes no sense at all and then um so to gin up that like there's this merge protocol thing that was kind of fabricated giving people the idea that somehow the two blockchains were going to merge which there's no such thing obviously so which is fucking hilarious and then so like there's a bunch of people that are like holy shit what like what do you mean we're going to merge? <laughs> so like, they don't even have blockchains work and there's like just drama being created. It's just like a lot of fun. Um, ah, I saw, <laughs> I saw the merge shit and like laugh my head off. I'm like, what the fuck is this nonsense? But, uh, he's playing, exactly. a, good part. He's playing a good character, isn't he? He's playing a good part, man. He is playing a very good part. Yeah. So then, uh, Ryan Lyon, I don't know if you know, Ryan, um, he's kind of a yeah. good friend of ours from Terra and, uh, he's also UK. And um, he he uh, he created a whole like fucking PDF and flow diagrams of how the whole fucking thing works, <laughs> and then like and did like a, a mega thread on it, like you know what I mean? Like he spread this mega thread, and then people are like holy shit, like they're really gonna merge, and like people are getting upset and everything else. Um, it's just a whole lot of fun. I don't know. The, the well, that's, that's why I was is, Yeah, that's, that's why. why yeah, the crypto space is like filled with so many different retards, right? Like you have like 
um, you have the total dimwits who don't know anything about crypto. And then you have the people that are like, I don't know, just having fun. And then you have, yeah, the idea is like, uh, all attention is good attention at some level, right? One of the hardest problems uh, that we have around here is like, especially like the markets down and this and that, you notice like everyone disappears, right? The ability to sort of gin up attention and keep the eye on the ball, like during that time is is a huge win, right? Like, so like you guys know, like, you know, probably like, uh, you know, like rack NFTs or whatever, people are less excited or something like during bear markets and stuff like that. But like, if you, you're, you, you keep going, right. You're doing the rack FM, you're doing different things. And a lot of other projects just disappear into oblivion. Right. So same thing. It's like, uh, you have to create like all sorts of interesting, uh, crypto drama, like people like to do like normally when there's like shit to do, like for Luna, especially there's a bunch of DeFi shit going on, a bunch of little flywheel effects and fun games and not games, but, you know, like DeFi strategies and shit like that. And a lot of the Twitter space and stuff we used to do like uh, earlier in the like very early this last year, this year and last year, we're all about like DeFi strategies and stuff. It's a lot of fun. And every time some new protocol would come out, we'd be like, you know, really, really like interviewing deeply the protocol developers to figure out like you know, what kind of strategies to do, how to buy the coin and like all these kind of these kind of things. And now there's like nothing to talk about, because on the one hand, most of the DeFi activity on on um, Cosmos was done on Terra, like all the cool stuff was right there. And then that all got wrecked and shit. Then the classic doesn't have anything on it so far, except for a little bit of NFTs and stuff. So it's like, there's not much to talk about. So it's like, you know, you're trying to gin up new ideas and stuff and cause chaos and like as long as people are paying attention, we, you can always sorry, do dude, that. Sorry, dude, interject. We raccoons are heard you mention us, dude. We've you know something? We've never been out of the news cycle for absolutely ages. And we've attracted like so many other people and projects into our little like uh, orbit, right? By hosting the like the rug FM, the rock FM, the stinky in the brains. Oh, wait a minute. Did we lose someone there? Oh, I thought someone dropped down. Uh, dude, yeah, uh, the, guy, the guy, the guy that was doing knots NFTs, um, he has a project on Omniflix. I forget his name. Um, he was just talking on uh, Jerry. Yeah, I don't know if he's from Australia or what, but he's he was talking on Omniflix, like on the other uh, uh, project that's going on right now, and he brought up the like people there brought up the uh, rack NFTs and talked about the group and everything. Talked about the Joe's pro- you know idea and how we kind of. Like everybody ginned up that whole thing, which is a lot of fun, you know, like, yeah. So it's like this kind of cross chain and cross community um, sort of engagement and stuff. And like, you know, this year, the, like the, all the people that are here now, like when the markets and everything are low and calm, we'll have all the alpha and all the knowledge by the time, um, you know, the next like cycle of excitement shows up. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, the, but yeah, the, I think the Joe thing is a good example. Um, the Rack NFT uh project stuff's a pretty good example like i don't know i think we're doing fine we'll get there do you think we Steffi, in your opinion do you think we're dealing with the uh the exploit in an like in an amicable and open and honest way i have to say the devs are very very humble and uh or have been humbled and there's a definitely I don't know what happened I, fill me in uh, there was this week. okay there was uh, oh by the way dude how's your wife is she is she fine now is she recovered she's okay yeah yeah, she's just about there. She's been off for work this last week from surgery and stuff, but she's doing good. Lovely. I'm glad to hear that, bro. In time for Christmas, yeah. Uh, dude, yeah, uh, White Whale, we got uh, exploited uh, the other day uh, with a flash loan attack. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna profess to, like, understand the tech behind it. I get, like, the basic idea of how this was, like, this, like, two-on-one Either the one or they didn't loss. Uh, they did uh, the, the, the dice on 98%. But there was a flash loan attack on Rack. It took about uh, 8K USD value out of the reserves. Uh, obviously, the reserves have been operating uh, on a, you know, a shoestring kind of thing and a, a threshold. But White Whale released their flash loans and then pretty much like straight away. And we didn't just get hit on uh, Juno. We got hit on Huawei as well. So I think there was like 40 million, 40 million, wah, wah, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, so Rack, like, I've had to go back, redo the entire all the contracts. Uh, what I like about this is that instead of having uh, separate reserves, 
for every game, which was by default, really. Like, as the guys built the, like, separate game contracts, they didn't think to, like, you know, uh, aggregate the reserve. Like, they needed a reserve for the first game. Then when they launched the contract for the second one, they needed another reserve. Well, now they already have all of these steps in place. So a, a, a big positive has come out of it where the reserve won't have to be that big because it's going to be spanned across like multiple games and they've engineered a way where other games are going to be able to just tap into that reserve automatically. But yeah, uh, Sefi, we got hit with flash loan attacks. The guys are like, guys, was I was it an bored. attack or was it just the normal function of flash loans like, to... Well, yeah, but it, no, it was an exploit in our code as well. There was the code. It was the code wasn't set up okay. to protect. Uh, it's a re reentracy, uh, isn't it, guys? Uh, that fucking word, like, isn't it reentracy okay. uh, attack? So, Sorry, it just yeah, yeah. The system wasn't handled, wasn't designed to sort of like deal with that. But I guess, like, it's better to find out now before you know before it's too big. Eight thousand bucks isn't exactly. too bad compared to exactly. Exactly, exactly, Steffi. That's what we've all said. All of us, all the raccoons have been so cool. There's been like no sell offs, nobody threatened. It's like, well, we expected this. We've been expecting this for six months. It's much better that it happened now than when we're on 10 chains with 10x the like, you know, liquidity or reserve available. So, dude, yeah, uh, I'm just, I've got to admire, like, literally, I know these devs so well. They've been a massive part of my life for 10 months. And the humility, like I've tried to like talk to them and, I, and they, they just kept saying, dude, dude, it's got nothing to do with anyone. It's like the, the book stops at us. It's our code. It's our, we missed it. It's like, like people just did what they could. And, and isn't that the code is law? I mean, I think that's where they're coming from, Sefi, right? The code is law. That's what the guys are hinting to me anyway. Yep. So, yeah, it's when code is law, your laws better be pretty good. <laughs> Well, wasn't there that kid? Can you remember that kid that was like really young last year that hacked that protocol? Uh, someone in the room probably will remember last year, maybe over a year ago, there was like a really like a teenager kind of kid or really young. Didn't he hack a protocol and then he was taking them to court over the uh, court is law thing? I don't even know what happened to that case in the end. I don't know if anyone was following that. I'm sure. I don't know if uh, Signal was. Sure, that was uh, talking about the, the tornado in- cash guy or who? No, no, no. This is long before that. This is like a teenage kid that he, he didn't hack a, a protocol. He exploited it because it was shit code. You know what, guys? I'll go and find what I'm talking about in a minute and put it in the nest. But there was a teenage kid last year and he was anonymous. Uh, and then he got like kind of outed on uh, crypto Twitter. But it was actually like going. So he'd filed like a lawsuit and he had like major, major lawyers on his side that had like, been involved in these things before. And they were arguing, like, the code is law. Like, you deployed the code. It's faulty code, right? It could be exploited. Therefore, the person who exploits it is not, like, you know, shouldn't be put up in a court of law and accused of something because all they did is follow the code. Isn't that the basis behind, like, code is law, no? Yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of the argument that's made... Um... I don't know. It's been made in computing since like networking began. Like, you know, is is a is a hack really a hack, or, or you know, you're just using the system as it's designed? Um, I think we and, have to be uh, careful. Sorry, dude. We have to be careful between hack and exploit because ROM has been giving me so much shit, dude, over this lately. Yeah, I'm really sorry. There's there's a difference. Like, for example, if you're playing a video game, uh, we used to have this problem in video games where like. Uh, it was possible for like video game companies to like roll back your winnings or your character or something like that, that you're playing. I remember this was an issue like in Ultima online EverQuest and world of Warcraft and all that shit. Like if you did something within the game that like, I don't know, you did something that you didn't like hack anything, you use the game normally, but it was not in the spirit of the game where you're able to sort of like, let's say, trap enemies in a way and then shoot them down without any risk to yourself or something like that, then like you'd have sometimes developers and come over to you and say, no, that's an exploit. We're going to roll back your money or your winnings or something like that, or we're going to jail you for a period of time or something like that. And so, yeah, the hack, a hack is where you actually go in there and like, you know, wreck the code or 
um, it's different. Yeah, it's not the same as an exploit. Exploit's like using the system as designed. But the in the real world, the thing is like the code is law idea. Um, like, yeah, you, you would have to say then that like, let's say your your site gets exploited. You should say, well, we're not going to go after the people that exploited us because that's just normal part of it's just our fault. We should have considered that exploit. Um, if you get hacked, ideally, like the whole point of blockchain smart contracts is it's not that easy to hack, right? That's the whole point. Um, so we don't tend to have as many hacks in blockchain. We tend to have more exploits um, where, you know, you create something and you didn't think about well, the consequences. Well, on that term, Sefi, is did we ever have any hacks when you think about it? They're all exploits because it's yeah, all, they're almost all the code. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, you know, outside of like some kind of like, uh, yeah, even a financial engineering attack or like a 51% attack or any of these kinds of things people talk about, um, those are all known risk factors, right? And, you know, y there's nothing preventing someone from doing it. And, and arguably, like, it's not necessarily against the law because there's no law against it, right? But the thing is, in real life, what happens is, is let's say someone loses a lot of money. Um, that doesn't prevent you from being able to go to court over something. And a jury then says, nah, we think that that's, uh, you know, if you can convince a jury, whatever you want to convince them of, that's the problem. That's why like in the crypto space, I think it's better for like major teams, um, to design systems where it's more appropriate for them to be anonymous and the code truly is the law because you can't go after anybody. And I know that sounds like, <laughs> well, like you, you, so can go, you, you can, you can have a jury. I'll, I'll give you an example. I know it's a sour spot, but uh, prop 16 or whatever we, you know, the, the Juno whale, um, was that an exploit? Maybe technically, right? That wasn't how it was supposed to be. And then you could take his coins if governance passed it, which it did. So, you know, there there are safeguards, or I guess there are ways of of, of reproducing yeah. exactly what we have in the real world. He gamed he gamed the system, didn't he? He didn't he didn't exploit anything. He just gamed the system. Well, the the answer is that was Juno's fault. Like <laughs> there's no other way to look at it except that was a mistake made in the design of the tokens distribution. Uh, period end of story like you can blame whoever anybody all you want but ultimately at the end of the day like if i'm designing a chain at this moment right um i have a several things that i'm going to prioritize like those things are a if something happens to me or my team or whoever we all die everybody should be fine that's number one number two uh like yeah if if a um event occurs a code is exploited whatever I don't want anybody to be able to come after me as a team because you don't know who the fuck I am, right? That's a that's a big difference. Um, and that's a risk that when people put money into that system, they have to accept and that's the end of it. But like doxed teams, like the reason why that just does not work in blockchain and you might as well go do a web two company is, is because then you open up yourself to all the legal issues if something were to happen. And then that itself becomes an attack vector over time. Um, which can be a real problem for people that are deploying like permissionless or even permissioned contracts on, on a chain. So to me, I don't know, like the base layer of a chain probably should have no governance whatsoever, in my opinion. Like, I think all of this governance nonsense is, is just like, I don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's stupid. I think uh, Jay Kwan's going to end up being right about this. I know he, he's half crazy half the time, but like, He's going to wind up being right about this almost surely. Satoshi did the same thing, right? Bitcoin doesn't have governance for a reason. Um, I think like ultimately um, all major differences in opinion about how a chain should work and everything else probably should just fork into a new chain. Um, I know that sounds not as interesting um, to people because it's like, wait, my bags, my bags, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, like at a, from a purist perspective, I think the legal angle um, and the legal attack vector is a real problem. Like, for example, let's say so, you have so the rack just, exploit. Just like, let's say, let's, take the, let's take the rack exploit, for example, right? Think about this. The rack exploit, um, let's say the exploits took all the money out of the raccoon reserves, and now the system can't function or whatever. 
And let's say some of the people who own, I don't know, let's say rack NFTs decide to sue for the um, losses. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to sue the team because these losses are because these teams didn't provide an adequate enough um, security structure, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm obligated to money. You know, there's liability involved here. In the real world, at least in the Western world, I don't know where you guys all live, but like in the United States, for example, every company has liability insurance for these types of lawsuits. So what happens is, is every company in crypto would then have to have liability insurance to handle this kind of bullshit. And I, I think it just defeats the whole point of Web3 if you're going to do all that nonsense, right? So I don't know. That's just my take. Yeah. So, so just because uh, you see the title is called We Need No Kings, right? So I think you touched upon the point here that if you want it to be permissionless it ha or semi-permissioned, there's no governance, right? Um, do you think I, I'm I'm very skeptical of the success of a blockchain that doesn't have a leader or that doesn't have any kings? I know it's it's outside of you know we know what Juno you know, stands for, but it does have a leader in Jake, in my opinion. He he took the torch. He said it himself. And um, on Terra, we had Do Kwan who motivated and pushed all the devs to develop some pretty amazing products on ETH. Everybody looks up to Vitalik, right? Uh, but on Bitcoin, there aren't any leaders, and I agree, but uh, you can't do much on Bitcoin, right? So if, if there's like development involved or smart contracts and things like that, how do you see, you know, a chain working in, in such a, you know, no governance, no leaders, no anything? Like, do you see that? Yeah, I think, I think it's like this, the layer one, um, the layer one, uh, needs to function with a couple of major things. And I think maybe what it is is that the innovation in the smart contract space hasn't progressed far enough yet um, to where like, you're sure that no more upgrades need to be made for that chain. Like Whatever it does, it does. It's like a Bitcoin kind of idea. And that's all it will ever do, right? Then anything that's built upon that chain will never break because the base layer doesn't break. Uh, the best example would be like, think about how physics works. Like think about the universe. If the speed of light were to change every week, we would have a problem, right? If the speed of light were like, if all of us could vote for a change in the speed of light, um, pretty much the entire universe would be fucked, right? So the universe doesn't work this way. You have to have a base layer, layer one, that ultimately is immutable and doesn't change. And then you can build all sorts of stuff on top of it. That well, Bitcoin had a few upgrades. Be... Bitcoin had had upgrades, right? There, there was like the the taproot upgrade, and there was this few uh, upgrades yeah. in the life cycle of Bitcoin. Uh, it, it is very complicated to push that through, and it takes like a huge amount of, you know, voting power. But which is uh, why I think it is, which is why I think which is why I think Bitcoin will end one day. By the way, I don't think it's going to last as long as people think. That's that's the controversial opinion, but I think oh, that's, a like, lot of controversial opinions here. <laughs> no, like, yeah, I mean, but like, I think, um, if you can jump in quickly. I think like, yeah. you know, you're using the example of how the universe organizes itself, but and I'm not sure that's how like people tend to organize themselves. Um, I think you make a great which point, is why, about which is why, by the way, because uh, of uh, fail, right? Right. Yeah. Um, the efficacy of like a neutral or like a neutral layer one that doesn't have any governance that kind of thing but i think that people do really <laughs> tend to like governance and I, I i think that at least for the near term like that's the kind of thing that's going to dominate just because it's how people organize around blockchains it's a big part of how people interact with the system yeah that's why like i think the layer one the basic laws of physics or whatever um need to have there needs to be a point at which things are immutable permanently um and then like if people want to create layer two solutions or they want to create sub DAOs or something like that that have governance that's all fine there's nothing wrong with like for example you know your country's governments work even though the laws of the universe are immutable right but if you don't get to some point where there's some immutable piece the thing in tech is like there's this idea that yeah, well, this is the tech, right? Is, you got to remember, yeah, the tech, tech is going not... to. Yeah, the idea is the tech is going to keep changing, and therefore you have to be able to keep upgrading. But then what you have is something very different. Like for example, evolution, life does this, right? DNA evolves over time, 
it's not immutable. Um, but at the same time, you and me, um, on a surface level, like if I want to have a change in my hair color, I can't necessarily will my hair color to change by modifying my own DNA. Um, you know, maybe one day that might not be the case anymore. We're living in a different world, but like for now, at least your base layer, which is your DNA and your body, you're not modifying in any major way. Um, and like, it's very difficult to do like gene therapy, for example, to change your DNA, but life over time evolves. And so if you think about life as the original technology of the universe, um, it like, you know, has become more and more evolved over time. It, you know, life does more and more cool shit. Your brain does cool shit compared to like the brains of creatures a million years ago, that kind of thing. Right. So if you look at it that way, yeah, it doesn't have to be totally immutable, I suppose, but that's where Jaquan's. Uh, and I kind of agree, which is where like, okay, you know, if you, if, you know, how does life create new variations? It just forks, right? Well, by at the end of the day, what are um, like DNA and all of the different, like if you and your uh, spouse get, you know, have a child or whatever, and then the child has, you know, your DNA and your spouse's DNA or whatever, uh, you know, mating and everything, why does all that happen in the first place? It's so you can get evolution. Um, you can get a new child that's not the same as the parent, but it, you don't necessarily destroy the parent to do so, right? And that, so blockchains have the potential to simply evolve in that way. And forking probably is the right answer to, uh, like, if you think a million years from now, you know, is your Juno chain going to be governed, you know, a million years from now, or is it even going to exist at that point, right? So we don't really think very long term in blockchain. We don't think like, you know, that things are going to be permanent. We behave as if they're going to die just like everything else, which maybe is the right answer. I don't know. But then like we want we keep wanting to sort of build bigger and bigger um, and we want to have all these governance representations. But Cosmos specifically is this idea that every chain can have a different um, like political philosophy it can have a different monetary philosophy. I think what's going to happen is, is like as thousands of chains get produced, especially now that Celestia is coming and Terra Luna V2, like the Feather Protocol is coming, like the ability to create new chains is going to be like, I don't know, spending two hours on the Internet playing on the, you know, on your computer and pushing a few buttons, like making new blockchains is going to be like, I don't know, like easier than <laughs> do it, finishing, a, finishing a color are by you, number. Talking about Celestia. So, are you talking about Celestia? Are you? I'm sure. I'm sure your man Seppi's talking. Oh, about please Celestia. don't! Please don't. <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying we have to talk about that. I'm just saying, like, the ease of making new blockchains, right? Like, just think of it from the perspective of like, if you could make a thousand blockchains in the course of a week, what makes your particular chain specifically special? You could have every permutation of different governance type and different monetary policy, etc., on different chains, and then all you have to do is say, wait which one becomes most popular and why. And those popular chains are because they maybe resonate with your politics. Maybe they resonate with your monetary ideas and all the rest of them will die. And it'll be just like evolution, right? Like survival, the fittest will play out and then you'll get the, you know, the, the best chains will win and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's an interesting space now. Um, and like well, that's that's kind of what I, uh, I think. You're missing a big thing. I think you're missing. Oh, guys, I think you're missing a big thing. Sefi, the validator on IBC, the validator set eventually are going to fucking dry up. We're already seeing like people like push to the limit with like margins and overheads, right? People don't realize what is actually fucking happening in IBC on the ground level, and how how if Celestia pull off what they're going to do, and everyone can just roll over. Right and provide that like data availability, like that sampling level. Hey, honestly, you've got to look at the L1s that have already made that. Not not in IBC elsewhere. You've got to look at the L1s that have said, "Nah, fuck that. Why should we run these three components when we can just jump on a Celestia and do what we're really good at?" It's so like Celo being the right example. The experts in mobile technology. Why fuck around with all that fucking data storage, right? And all the other fucking shit when they can just absolutely streamline their business to be extremely good at what they are really fucking good at. Like the first they'll want to tap into like iOS. Like people don't even like DVPN. 
why the fuck would that, and even though it's a piece of sh- shit dead ghost gym, why would it stay as an L1? Why would it run its own validator set? Uh, why would it run its own storage? Why would it go through all that? Why wouldn't it just fold out in Celestia? Yeah. And whatever validators yeah, you've got what you're, Yeah. What you're, what you're saying is, is that like, um, at some level, it doesn't make sense to reinvent the universe, right? Like you just simply, your business model may not require all that shit. Um, yeah, let me, I, I let agree me with put you. Up in the nest. Let me put up in the nest. So if we go and continue, but I'm going to go in the nest. Give us two seconds, yeah, like, bro. The, like think of it this way: app. If you look, go back to like, uh, go back to uh, the internet. And you say, okay, look, uh, who makes the most money on the internet? Is it the people that have the servers that run the internet? No, not necessarily. Is the people that um, run the cell phone companies? Not exactly. Is it your internet service provider? Nah, their their margins are whatever. Um, most of the money is made by like the apples and the Googles of the world who are like built on top of that. The app, the apps themselves are the major, um, you, you know, final products are the ones that make most of the money. And that argument's being made for Cosmos as well. Like, um, and many of the really best apps are probably not even going to have a token. They're just going to make a lot of money, whether it's like for trading or whatever the hell it is. And um, the layer ones and things are not where most of the money will be made. Like the infrastructure, the so-called um, plumbing. Um, some people like to invest in that sort of thing. I'm, oh, I'm going to invest in the picks and shovels or some bullshit. Um, I got news for you. Like no, in no example in tech were the picks and shovels that made actually most of the money. In <laughs> Which one of y'all farted, dog? Steffi, Steffi wait a, all right, Bobby, wait a minute. Steffi, look up. Steffi, I went in the nest. Yeah. Dude, 22nd of April. I mean, I know I sound like a broken record, but that was because when I was talking about it even this time last year, very few people were listening, understanding. We've seen the validator issues. Like, guys, the validator situation right now on the greater IBC is a critical mass. What did I say in April? Uh, let's, let's read. What if I told you Celestia was an IBC within the IBC? And this is before I even knew about Optimint, right, and the full stack. I hadn't even, like, revealed at this point exactly what was going to be the having. Optimint only came out in July or August or something, which is the Cosmosm integration into one part of the stack that sits on the data availability level, which is one of many stacks. What if I told you it's an IBC, like, within the IBC because it is, isn't it? It's going to be able to like tap into like pretty much everything. Once all of shit's in place, but just better, built different. Evmos will be out of date by the time it comes out. Uh, I mean, I said I thought I thought it would be out by the end of this year. You know, they've just taken another fifty-five million. The guys are doing like what they're doing. They're playing very cleverly. Uh, they're putting money into the settlement layer, which is critically important. We're going to obviously build that infrastructure out. I cannot wait to see what happens in the next, guys. At the end, about the beginning of December, in 12 months, I'll, I'll enjoy the conversation we'll all have in 12 months, like of the, the landscape of blockchain that we sit in, because it'll be fucking unrecognizable to what you see today. There's, there's validators that will run, like Todd, people like that who's got equipment who can really run shit on this data availability level. They're going to run for the hills and everything's going to be paid in the native token. We'll see. I mean, it's a gamble. It's a punt. It's like everything else, like Sefi was saying. But Sefi, at the end of the day, like tech, tech's always been about a, a punt in the early days, right? It's here, so I may not be <laughs> audible. Oh, he's probably said he's got to go and save someone's life or something there. I didn't hear that. Did I, am I getting rugged or did anyone hear? No, it's my I hear him. getting weak. I think Wabi had some comments. Yes. Sefi is like a warrior. He's like a Celtic warrior to save the people of crypto. Read us. Okay, look, look, Wabi, Wabi, Wabi. We're not, we're not fucking going down that route, son. At the minute, we'll, we'll go down that route at like 2 a.m. or something. What time is it my time? It made it's 20 past 10. I'm in a sharp thinking mode. I'm on that fucking event. I'm on the chassis. Do you know what Celestia is, mate? It's a chassis. Do you know how I many do. different types of cars you can build on the same chassis? But people I don't do. realize validators. 
validators are struggling right now. Celestia is an outlet. Mark my fucking words. They're going to run for the hills. I gains. You fucking know. Gains is all over it already. Raccoon said to us, like after the, the, the white whale exploit, it's 10x. 10x now on Celestia. I, I reckon by the end of Q1, max, if Celestia's out, even even in the uh, better stage, right, you'll have a Raccoon supply desktop application with upwards of like 8 to 10 games. Uh, it'll be several blockchains and you won't know. And guys, if you think I'm shitting you, you don't know our devs. Our Robo, devs I posted, are- Robo, I posted something on the nest for you. I think you might like it. I'm also yeah. bullish on Celestia. Did you? Let's have a look. Oh, I posted it on the nest. Did you see that? From March. I'm a warrior just like you. I like this. Have a look. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. My name is oh, Olaf. Wait a minute, dude, dude. You said, oh, and Evmos. Oh, my fucking God. Dude, Evmos oh, is fucking Oh, I knew. Are you talking about? Are you getting the... scared? <laughs> Are you getting the clear? Power of, <laughs> the power clear. of hindsight. I was wrong, but it is okay. Ah. It is okay now. I do not hold. I do not hold it. It's environment, lad. I've heard you talk properly. You don't have to put that fake accent on, dude. I heard you like do the fake accent before, but then I was in a space listening when you were doing the normal voice. I'm quite happy with the normal one. I mean, it's up to you. You play whichever part you want. Uh, I tried another veer out of my lane, but that's 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 fine. Uh, why why Wabby? What what what? Hey, I thought it was Wally at first. Robo. I always thought Robo. you were Wasabi. Someone mentioned your name, and I was like Wabby. I thought it was Wasabi, like because I'm blind, off blind now. I look at people's names and they're fucked up. Like that's why I call uh, your man uh, Sefi El Chippy because I don't know any different no? And then Rec Rec Pleb, like uh, I struggle to say his name, you know. So I have to make up some words. So King Wasabi. I How are you doing? Sefi. I call Sefi Peppy. Sefi Peppy. Sefi Peppy. Peppy the Sefi. And sometimes, how does he, sometimes he, I tell Sefi. Wait but, a minute, wait a minute. How, how does he feel about that? I mean, did I you consult feel, him? Is it, is it, is it, I think he feels, it, I think he feels pretty... He, he feels pretty lunky about it. Sometimes he'll feel like completely lunked out. Uh... <laughs> With my hyper oh, wall, you know, he's dude, like, "Hold on, Wabi." You shit patter. Did you just describe shit patter as hyper ball? Did you really? I hate it. said oh, hyperbole <laughs> or oh, hyper ball. Where, where, where are we going? Where are we going in this conversation? Like, dude, 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 dude. There's a difference between fucking patter. Uh, yes, Gains. I'm putting this cunt on mute for a minute. Gains, uh, what's your man on about? Wasabi. Robo, Robo, can you bring up my friend? <laughs> uh, can, you, can you bring him up, bring him up, please, mate? <laughs> oh, oh my God, who have I got to find? Please just request, guys. Anyone who wants to come up, request. I keep inviting people and they don't come up again. Who did you say? Can you please bring up my friend Crypto's chain, please? Crypto, Crypto's chain. Where was he talking about? Where is he, man? Crypto. Oh, he's up. He's up. He's up. He's up. Hello, is that there? Was who's that? Cryptos? <laughs> What's going on here? Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I, I actually know Lil Gains for a long time, and uh, I was telling him that I'm. Uh, I really like the Cosmos ecosystem as well. I'm normally covering the Polkadot ecosystem on YouTube quite a lot, but uh, I really like Cosmos as well. So I really want to change my channel into one of those fifty fifties because I see a lot of similarities between the two ecosystems. Yeah, uh, dude, dude, listen, I'm just gonna see. And never mind about if you want to know anything about IBC Cosmos, just come and investigate the raccoons, bro. We're stinky, we're a little bit uncouth, but I'll tell you what, you'd, you'd, you'd take us home, give us a bath, and sit us at your dinner table and take us to bed. I tell you, come and come to us, and we'll teach you all about everything you know. You're from Polka Dot, are you? You said you're from Polka Dot, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a soon to be ambassador, I'm not an ambassador yet, I'm a content creator. Okay, okay. I, I, do you know something, what I like about uh, the situation with, I mean, Gavin Wood. Uh, obviously, I was aware of Gavin Wood in uh, 2014, uh, and it wasn't through crypto. It was actually through something else. And, uh, like, I wasn't involved in crypto at the time, but I, I'll put that to one side. I'll not bring that into the conversation right now. That is for another conversation, and I've got many receipts. 
the thing I like about uh, well, I'm not too sure if I like or what what it is, right? But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, uh, polka dot has like parrot chains, right? That's right, right, yeah. It has parrot chains, right? Okay. And uh, mankind, we have we have the Olympics, right? We have the Olympics. Is that right? Every every four years we have the Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah. And we also have the Para Olympics, right? And then we have right. uh, then we have IBC, and then we have IBC. Do you understand where I'm coming from, bro? Like uh, this close this close world of polka dot, I had to give up on it a long time ago. It's an exceedingly like closed like part of blockchain, isn't it? You're either in there or you're not, like kind of thing. I like what Interlayer, I like Interlayer BTC, what they're doing. But man, it's such a difficult ecosystem. So if you want to come over, bro, or you want to come and like learn more, explore more, or come and find out what the great IBC is all about, you are more than welcome and you'll have a great time. A fucking great time, mate. Pleased to meet you. You too, you too. Thank you. Yeah, I'm aware of it. I know that it's it's really good, but I know there are also some concerns being talked about right now with regards to Cosmos 2.0, because there was some stuff doing there. Like, for example, uh, a number of coins were going to be minted, which the community weren't really happy about. So I'm not sure what the story is there and how that's going to impact it in the short term. That's exactly what I was going to ask you, Cryptos. Like, um, what what have you heard? Now that you're like really into the polka dot ecosystem, like what is um being talked about over there about our ecosystem? Is that mainly like the biggest biggest news over there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, one of the other parachains that's uh, trying to build a bridge between Cosmos and polka dot is uh, one that's mentioning a lot of stuff about Cosmos as well. Uh, composable finance. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. I mean, they don't have yeah. a very good reputation in the ecosystem because uh, they've been holding people basically captive, trapped, let's say, uh, by not distributing any of the coins that they were supposed to distribute. Because, like, you know the way on Cosmos, if you stake Adam or if you take part in governance, you get an airdrop of a specific layer one, right? Well, in Polkadot, if you would have taken part in the parachain auctions and you would have locked your dot for a specific project, hoping that they're going to win that parachain uh, auction, then they would they would normally give you their their coins after say two to three months from the moment they were winning but unfortunately like the lease was over and they still didn't distribute any coins so imagine i mean you got your not not your dot your kusama kusama is actually the canary network of polka so they have a canary network on kusama so 11 months passed we got our kusama back but we never got our uh, pika coins back which are the canary of uh, composable so i mean what they're trying to build is great, right? They're trying to build this DeFi bridge between Cosmos and Polkadot, but it's just they really screwed people with the coins. So we'll have to see if they can make up for that in some way. Why, why is it that uh, they didn't do that, though? Uh, are they running into problems with the protocol? Or is this more like a, is it a vesting period or what's going on? We, we, it's because we of the market. Hard. I mean, every, every time I asked, they were saying it's because of the market. We don't want people to dump. So I was like, but yeah, well, why do you care? I mean, you are just a project. You you should build the product and deliver the product. And it doesn't matter what people decide to do with the coin. If they believe in your product, they're going to hold, right? At the end of the day, that's the whole, the whole idea of it. You shouldn't care what people are going to do, but they're like so worried about the market condition and people dumping and abandoning them that, you know, they don't want to give people their coins yet so that people can stay in the community and wait. Sorry, man. I'm texting the uh, composable team right now. I want, uh, I want uh, some answers. Yeah. I want some fucking answers. I did slip with it. I did slip in the nest though, and and it was tongue in cheek. Uh, so, dude, like, well, welcome up, uh, Cryptos Chain. It was uh, just like tongue in cheek. I'm gonna follow you now, yeah. Uh, but you can see if you go to the nest, you can see like my comment like a long time ago, right? Can't even remember when it was. I was like, you get chains, and then you get para chains. And you get the Olympics, and then you get the Paralympics. I'm just saying, like, like uh, I was such a big guy, such a big uh, dot, like the entire like polka dot ecosystem, like with Kilt and everything, like back in the day. It didn't take long for me to realize that I was like, nah, this is like, nah, it's not good. It's not great. It's, it's certainly, uh, I mean, there's a lot of VC money in there 
But it's such a close yeah. system. It's such a close system. It's ridiculous. It's it's Gavin trying to like over engineer uh, blockchain, and people have flattened them by like allowing them to create what he's created. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they might change. They might be able to do something to the code. But it's such a weird like setup. When you look at other blockchains, right? Well, I be seeing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right now it's it's. I think it's still early because I mean, look, like Cosmos, you you guys have like a year ahead of Polkadot, right? In terms of development, Polkadot had just really started launching uh, the parachains at the beginning of this year. So I mean, they've only been doing it for a year now. So I think we got to give them more time before we can see it for sure. But just like you've got on Cosmos Juno, for example, which is a known EVM solution, bringing smart contracts from Ethereum over to Cosmos. There's Moonbeam on Polkadot doing exactly the same. So we've we've got pretty much the same kind of links right now when it comes to outside of these ecosystems. Uh, I think we just need to wait, give them more time until we can get these bridges open, you know, and then when we're going to have these bridges, I think you're going to see more interoperability between these ecosystems, like between Ethereum, Cardano, Cosmos, Avalanche, and all of these, right? maybe near protocol. Dude, as well. Dude, do you know uh, Sheldon? Have you met, met Sheldon before? Uh, he's like the near dev, but he, he works closely with uh, Polka Dot. He's on Octopus at the moment. Do you know Sheldon? He's a he frequent Sh- Sheldon Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He rings a bell, but I've never actually met the guy. I mean, he's quite famous, isn't he? So. Oh, dude, he calls in our spaces all the time, doesn't he? Games. He's games his best mate. <laughs> yeah, Sh- Sheldon D- Deer. Deer. I think his name is Sheldon Deer, actually, uh, Robo. Oh, sorry, but he's in, oh. yeah, he's he's working for the Octopus Network. Very yeah, yeah. intelligent oh, guy. But they they on uh, on Polka Dot, right? Or they they're on the they're on one of the parachains or the the substrate. I can't remember exactly. Near, I'm not over there. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, well, he was talking to us about the stuff, the work he's done on parachains, right? Like there's people trying to like build. Isn't isn't near connected to Polka Dot right now? Uh, no, it's not connected. No, I mean nothing ex- except for Ethereum is connected right now. Didn't Ro- uh, wait a minute, Gaines. D- wasn't it Sheldon who was t- talking about so we've been working on parachains? Like, I'm sure. I'm was- sure. I'm sure Octopus is working on a whole bunch of different bridges, but the one they're focusing on right now is um, the um, Near and, and Cosmos. Dude, can I ask you, Segway, very quick, dude, uh, Crypto, so I do apologize. Segway again, I never ha- I've never had a chance to speak to you. What was it like interviewing uh, Don Kryptonium last night? I mean, I'll- <laughs> come on, t- t- talk to me about your experience. Of- Did you have any you- control from the minute, from I, the first? I was, I was actually really shocked that he was so open about his past. And um, now I kind of understand the way he is more, right? Because he had to prove himself to his father in a way, you know. I, I don't know if this is the right time to get into like all the, the details, but I can understand why uh, Don is the way he is because just he just came from a, a rough rough childhood with his parents, you know. He he was uh, viewed as a piece of shit by his dad, a lazy cunt, and he just was tr- trying to chase his dream, you know, Robo. He's just really trying to chase his dream and ended up leaving his parents' well, house to pursue wait it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You didn't set any context. I know I'm in the kitchen. It's echoey. You do get, before you go on, you didn't set any context. Is that it was brought up in like a, like 90s Poland, which like Eastern Bloc, you know, not long after the fall of the Soviet Union. Like the place he grew up in. Fuck, I mean, I grew up on the fucking streets in a rough place where I grew up is nothing compared to where like Don grew up, trust me. He grew up in the dark lands, dude. That's a, that's that's where the real bad people come from. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Go on, continue. So yeah, like I was saying, um, he he was um just pursuing his dream. He actually wanted to be a a director. He was trying to get into film school, but failed like like three times trying to get into school. So he moved out of Poland to the UK. And met a met a girlfriend there, and um, after that girlfriend <laughs> met another one, and ended up moving to Hong Kong. But I guess I guess the the interview was great, great to understand really like uh, his his background and 
and he's a good dude. Like deep down, he's a, he's a good dude. He's humble, man. He's a humble, humble guy. Did you catch? Did you catch the story about uh, how he got into crypto, or, or how like he uh, got the name Don Kryptonium? We only really talked about it for like the last ten minutes of the space, or towards the end, really. Dude, I caught, I caught, like I heard him talking about two thousand seventeen buying that, and but then, then I was going home at that bit. Dude, I think I missed how he got the name. Please tell me. Yeah, he actually, um, he actually bought Bitcoin because of Kim dot com, and bought it and ended up getting pretty wrecked. If I'm not mistaken, guys, sorry, correct me because my mind's all over the place. No, I heard that. No, I heard that. You're right. Yeah, Kim dot com. I heard that bit. Yeah. Yep, and actually, he ended up buying some uh, Adam at, at a pretty low dollar amount, like around two to one, one to three dollars around that range on Coinbase, but. It was kind of like, <clears throat> kind of like his his background into like the whole filming thing that he wanted to do, and also he was he was like doing some Photoshop work, freelance Photoshop work. Uh, that kind of got him into the whole YouTubing uh, and crypto thing. And his friend was the one that actually like gave him the name Don Kryptonium. He wanted the most cringiest name ever, and his friends like, well, what about Don Kryptonium? And he's like, yes, that one. <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever you can say I mean listen guys a long time ago uh, I said you've got to admire the hustle and the grind of the Don the thing is now I'm just getting his entertainment value I never used to get it before Gains, his entertainment value has gone tenfold in my opinion anyway I last a lot I, I, I know it's very entertaining and Part of the reason he is the way he is on YouTube is um, because while he was getting to, into the whole YouTube thing, he was actually trolling other like crypto influencers. He was trolling other um, shillers on YouTube. And that's where the kind of kind of like the trolling uh, personality comes from, because he, he loved just doing that with other with other other influencers. Gaines, can you Gaines, you've got a good sound system and I, I'm in the back at the minute. Yeah, I'm going to sort the dogs out. Right. Uh, Dude, have you got the recording? Uh, it's on his page from the other day. Have you got the recording where, where he talks about Winston? So like uh, B-Bands, uh, Brasco, Homestead, Tara Spaces, Rama V, uh, Shrewd, you all in the room, QJs here. All you guys that like I might not know personally, uh, all you I'm going to give you a shout out. If Gaines can find this clip, of Don Kryptonium talking about my dog, right? Gaines, how funny is that? That's fucking mad, that man. My comment was like perfect timing. Are you talking about on YouTube? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, yeah, but on his, uh, yeah, but on his, uh, you know, the video like, where he puts the stream on the Twitter, it's like literally like, like two minutes, 20 or whatever. Like, you can play it, like, before he starts, when he starts talking about the prop. Like, people, you need to realize that what happens is my comment on YouTube pops up. Obviously, it's on YouTube. Don just puts it on Twitter uh, at the same time. And literally, he, he, he's talking about his prop. He's like, well, I put the prop 59. And then my comment comes up, like, Winston's dad. And I'm like, dude, your prop's fucking shit. And he's like... Who are you? Dude, I don't want to spoil it, Gainsey. <laughs> okay, it's got to be the one where he says Juno is dumb. That YouTube video? The young kid. The young kid. You know the you know, the live the live thing with the young kid the other day? The live thing with the uh, young kid? Ah, yes, yes. I mean, I have it right you know, now. The hacker, through his young stuff. Ukrainian. Yes. Guys, what do you think you, about blockchain you know, games? I mean, are there any solid ones on uh, Cosmos at the moment? Shit, I'm getting rogued. Guys, I'm getting rogued. Wait, I'll have to connect. Hold on, I'm getting okay. rogued. Give us a quick second, wait. See? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you're back. I, I can hear you, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, we lost gains. Our gains got rogued as well. Okay, wait, wait a minute, guys. Get gains as co-host. 
I mean, it seems when you dropped out, the uh, Twitter series didn't actually end, I'm, I'm sure. which is strange because I mean, normally when the, when the host drops, the whole Twitter space drops as well. No, no, you've got like 60 seconds. Oh, wait, he's Gaines back as a co-host. Gaines, are you back? What the hell was that all about? Like, we got double, double roped. Gaines, we got double roped, both of us at the same time. Double roped the co-host. Can you believe it? And we got his beard going, dude. Anyway... Have you found the clip or not? I did. I found. I found it. Yeah. Clear, clear for us, dude. The beginning, right? I was. Asking, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys heard it, but I was asking if uh, there are any blockchain games on Cosmos right now that you guys are aware of. Raccoon, Raccoon Dolphet. We're, we're offline for upgrades at the moment, dude. Type in Raccoon dot bet. That's all you need, dude. Go on, games. Um. I, I don't know if he's re- like referring to more of like a <clears throat> like a first person shooter game or whatever, but uh, no, I mean any any game that uses NFT technology on Cosmos oh, yeah. right now. That's a perfect example right there. Because I saw Nicholas uh, joined here as well. He's listening to us. He I I know him actually. He works for one of the parachains uh, called the Yuna, who are also building blockchain games on Polkadot. So hopefully when, when we're going to have that bridge between Cosmos and Polkadot, we'll be able to get more interoperability from that aspect. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, go to that website really quick, and we'll talk more about, about the uh, different games that there are in, in Cosmos. But Robo, we have somebody requesting to speak. If you don't mind bringing them up. I can't, I can't accept it, even though I'm the co-host. It's not working. Give us a second. Give, it Give us a second. Uh... Okay, ask, is it, is it your man? Oh, it's your man. I love this fella. He's fucking class. He knows the offside rule, unlike the American clubs. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to play this thing. Okay, ready? I'm going to play it. I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm in the amazing shape. I've been progressing mentally and physically. I've been becoming more powerful, more influential, uh, more uh, fearless. How about you? Is it that one, Robo? Oh, no. Robo, you there? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, but keep with it. I mean, it is about two minutes, but we might as well listen to the whole thing. He asks about his hair. Like, you might as well keep going to the bit where he's like about the club. Like, I, I've only seen the one on Twitter, and it's like two minutes, 20 seconds. On, on the one on Twitter, which I think is the full episode, yeah? It's like two minutes, 20 seconds. But, dude, like, you can even listen to Don. I love that. More influential. Did you hear it? Dude, I love this man. If if you're not, if you're listening, all phrases come in. Wow, James, you owe Fraser an apology from the other day when you got rogued to fucking death. Oh, Mate, he was in it. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, he, he followed me, and I didn't even realise because of like the phone situation, and I wasn't paying that much attention. Anyway, I followed him, and I sent him like an invite earlier. So yeah, Fraser, welcome back. We'll get you up as soon as possible. Like, dude, uh, Gaines. I don't know. You can play it from the beginning, but I, I hope YouTube is the same as Twitter, right? At the same time. He only talks about his hair and that. Like, he asks the guy how bald he is. Like, how old he is, how bald he is. And then he starts talking about his prop. And that's when he gets annoyed with Winston. Dude, it's fucking hilarious. Go it was on. about two minutes in, right? Because, like, the first the first yeah. few minutes, like, it was really choppy. Like, Nick's, Nick's audio was horrible. I don't want to, I, yes. I don't really want to play that part. Correct. About two minutes in, yeah. Let's see. Uh, we understand that. Like, I want to chat to you, Nick, because I made my first proposal today on Juno, and someone is commenting that my prop is shit. And I'm saying, Winston, mm-hmm. uh, you are shit. Come on, kids. Put it. James, put this shit back on with guys. Listen to Don Kryptonium talk about my dog, my comment on YouTube. Because what happened was a few weeks ago, Rama uh, rogue Don. He started the live stream and no one was there. And Rama was it earlier and Don was at like Rama's on an alt or something. Don's asking about his sound and Rama's like, no, it's fucked. So Don's flapping and I'm like, fucking Rama rogue him on his live stream. Come on, Robo, have a go. See what you can do. So I was waiting. I typed me comment, and I was like, the first time he mentions his prop, 
I'm going to put this in because, you know, YouTube gives you like a, like a, a few seconds. Like before, it'll put your comment up. Doesn't it, Gaines? Yeah, you know, when you type your comment, uh, like, see, yeah. oh, there's a queue. Yeah. Wait, uh, that's a pleb, isn't it? And I was like, waiting, waiting, waiting. The minute he said, like, oh, today I put my first, and I was ender. And I sent that shit up like, wait, dude, play this again just for me. Everyone's like, what's going on? But, dude, if you know how funny is this, go on. What, one more time when he, this is, I put my pro up to do it. Uh, the guy that is over can, there, can, so. can you can you give me to like I will uh, post it somewhere so oh, you yeah. not feel so lonely. Yeah, I will get you the link where here uh, oh, exactly. in the private chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wings and okay. that. Like I want to chat to you, Nick, because I made my first proposal today on Juno, and someone is commenting. That my prop is shit, and I'm saying Winston, mm -hmm. uh, you are shit. Your life is shit. Uh, what about, about what is this proposal? I, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh my god, dude, Gains, you know something like V's at work, uh, maybe Shroots at work, maybe Gus is like uh, it's still down in Miami. Well, he lives in Miami, doesn't he? But he might be still down in Miami doing his business at the conference. Like, there's these people, hopefully, are listening in. And, like, they're busy with their own lives, but they're laughing at this shit. They're laughing at, like, Don, like, who is you? you shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. Raccoons have just never stopped causing absolute carnage across this ecosystem. Uh, by the way, Gaines, have we got a trippy wolf? Or a... Who, who's this? Is this Gia Giannis? Hello, Giannis, the offside man. Good evening. Hey, 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 good evening or good morning, pleb and not pleb friends. I like you. you. I like you. I like you a lot, actually. You, in the last few days, you've gone right up in my estimations. You're, in, you're, in, you're on the list of the, like, the top five new best friends on crypto Twitter. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you cool. too. You too. You too. You know, that uh, tag team we did on the Americans about the offside. Man, it was it was epic. I have a dark team. <laughs> Game dark team. <laughs> <laughs> your man Gus. Wait a minute, your man Gus has just come up. Wait a minute, Janice. He's an American. Gus, do you yeah. know the offside rule? Do you know the offside rule, Gus? <laughs> no, no. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, how are you guys doing? I'm. I'm. Calm. We're not bad. I'm We're not bad. Mentis today. I mean, uh, you're uh, you're in Thailand, right? So you, it's Friday night, so you're getting your piss on, probably, right? Hello, dead air. What'd you say, Gus? What'd you oh. call me? Oh no, no, I was, I was talking to Robo. <laughs> giving me so. shit? No, I was, I was saying. I, I, I was saying Robo's in Thailand, right? So you're, it's Friday night, so you're probably getting your piss on right now. So it's always fun to listen to you. So anyway, how are you guys doing? I was, Gus, I, I did comment, but I didn't realize I was on mute. I'm like, you know what? I've only ever spoken to Gus, like, it, uh, like late morning to early afternoon, my time. And he's <laughs> always been absolutely chemist. He's been fucking mortal every time I've been speaking to him, like 3 a.m. And it's like, he's like, you're all right, Robo? And I'm like, waking up. So like Gus is coming in and he's like, I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip this fucking motherfucking spaces right on Robo's head. Nah, man, dude. I like this. Hey, Gus, have you had a good time at the conference? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was good. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing work right now. I mean, I I live in two countries, so um, I'm here I'm here in Florida now, but uh, my wife has a house here. So, but um, I'm up near the Space Coast. But I was down in uh, Decentral, representing Secret on the first day, and it was it was a ghost town, man. I'll tell you guys, it was a ghost town, and um. I heard, I heard, I heard I think yeah. members who were there, and, and it was just, it was depressing. It was very sobering, man. It just was really sobering because when I went to Cosmoverse and Medellin, it was jumping. It was like things had never changed. The bull, you know, the bull market's still here. It was awesome. But I saw your stuff about the loop. I think it was the loop party, right? And I, I DM'd you on that because I was at the loop secret party in Medellin. Well, of course, listen, we're just trying to keep, we're just trying to keep raccoons in the news cycle. As we do, the stinky blinders, right? We're mean. <laughs> we're, we're, we're reporting. Where, where, where? However, I, I've only just found out recently, and I mean recently as in the last 48 hours, right? 
So in the last 48 hours, I've only just found out that uh, Loop reached out to Raccoon, which if you look at like the metrics, the teams, the funding, it's like, dude, really? Like, would you do that? Like, you should have been saying to Rax, hey, we'll do this for you. Uh, but that uh, through a third party, and I mean, I tweeted this yesterday, so it's out. It's public knowledge. I'm not going to start naming people. Uh, you know, they reached out to the Raccoon team and said, like, oh, do you want to co-sponsor, like, the booth uh, to get, like, the word out on your NFTs? What I, what I found was really funny is that, like, this was, like, the end of August. The peak or bottom of our NFTs were, like, beginning of July. By this, like, the time that this person's talking about, like, we were hitting the 300 mark as a floor. And we've only progressed since and, and obviously gone up and down with supply and market conditions and, and obviously the relative USD price to secret. Right? However, though, I just think, wow, what a fucking pauper. Are you listening, Tom? Are you listening, Simon? What a fucking pauper move to send your little minions out to Raccoon with your fucking little hands out, with your little begging ball. Please, sir, can I have some more? What, 1.4 million? Couldn't get you to like, <laughs> oh my God. I, I've give up. I've give up on, on even trying to like, think like, the, like you can hold these people accountable for their behaviors and their actions, right? Because despicable people can't be held accountable. They just need to be fucking disregarded and thrown to the side. And I'm fucking sick of this shit. And I retweeted the day with a timestamp of, like, fucking bragging on a spaces, man, about your salaries, man. Aye? you fucking got fucking 1.4 million, man. Well, you haven't got it all yet, have you? You've still got to get a bit of it. But 1.4 million, man, for what you've produced? Fucking Jesus, man. Absolute disgrace to the industry. And, and we all know this. I'm like, I'm not repeating anything. I'm not, like, blowing the trumpet. But that's just my viewpoint. So when you go, cash in the rack and say, oh... Like, we, we, you know, do you want to sponsor the booth and we'll advertise your NFTs for you in Medellin for a cash payment? I'm like, and I only just find out about this. They didn't want to tell me, you know, because they know I'd go fucking mad at the time. They know before the event. And I went mad because I was gone mad before the event anyway. at seat or plundering the fucking Juno pool and then selling under fucking $2. I could go on and on, man. On and on about the things I know, man. I have books textbooks on every fucking detail of everything that's happened, man. Anyway, uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of shit. I, I blew up a, a, a governance call the, uh, yesterday. So um, I'm calling people out on salaries and stuff like that. And, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of people, a lot of self-serving people in governance councils who don't have the qualifications. I don't have the qualifications to serve on a governance council, but you got these like 16 year old kids Living in their mother's basement. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, where they went to school. Excuse my language. I don't I don't know what the hell what their qualifications are, but they're they're getting thirty thousand dollar years, I mean thirty thousand dollar a month salaries plus vested tokens. It's gotten knocked down to ten thousand. Thank goodness. But um, there's some communities I'm just ready to just give up on. So, you know, people contact me and say, Oh, well, I'm in a governance council and uh, I need some advice on the situation. And so I do this shit pro bono. I just give people advice and I rewrite stuff, proposals and stuff. I'm sort of like a ghostwriter. Not all my stuff gets into the, that, you know what I mean? But these are white hat people in governance councils that, that come out and it's just the self-serving shit that goes on in these fucking projects. Here I go again. Legal, but, legal English. Gus, Gus, legal English is the highest form of uh, English. And obviously like banking, uh, banking institutions or financial institutions, yeah, uh, when they write yeah, I mean, things, they, whatever. But but like it's like like there's nobody knows the language or can do better than a, like than a lawyer, except for someone like me. You know, <laughs> yeah, and also, <laughs> yeah, and also, and also, <laughs> and also someone, you know, English PhD. But there's great writers out there. I mean, I see a lot of really good proposals out there. Um, you know, some that can be improved. And I mean, I think if he, by the time they get go through the, the, the machine, the language is, is OK. It's acceptable. And it has to be has to be industry industry specific as well. It can't just be legalese in there. Otherwise, it's, you know, no one's going to friggin read it. But um, but it's got to be some some ways to, um, you know, prevent things from happening. You know, Gus, but, um, Gus, the idiot. Wait, Gus, I've got to ask you as a professional, same as myself, 
I bet you hate like pronominal adverbs. Uh, I mean, to you, you can probably use them like normal, but like for people like me who have to explain them to people who have to do your job, it's the worst thing in the fucking world. I absolutely hate them. There's nothing in this yeah. world I hate more pronominal adverbs. Oh my god. They're yeah, disgusting. I mean, you know, it's quickly, slowly, annually, extremely. I mean, it's um, it, I mean, adverbs are okay. It's passives really get. That's what really pisses me. No, no, no. I said, no, no, no. Sorry, dude. Sorry, you misheard me. I said pronominal adverbs. I didn't oh. say adverbs. I wouldn't be that kind of player. I'm oh, talking about oh, oh, contract okay. language. I'm talking about pronominal adverbs, like, you know, uh, they're under, uh, here for, uh, therefore without the E. I'm talking about all the uh, here in. I'm talking about all those ancient Germanic words that, like, the English yeah, language, yeah. like, a bunch of plebs adopted. Dude, you know, last year, Wait. Totally. I, I, Gus, I have to tell you. Literally. Gus, I have to tell you. <laughs> Dude, I have to tell you. Last year, Robo had his like finest moment in his career. I actually wrote uh, a course, like a group course, a workshop, uh, which was twelve hours of pure contract training. So that was all like different types of contracts, etc. Right? Different like language, pronominal adverbs, for example. Right? But then I had to test them at the end. And uh, for a company, serious shit, their pass mark was like 85% at one person field. But dude, I put like fucking no joke. Oh man, I must have put 60 hours of work into just getting like everything right, whether that was like licensing contracts, dude, or man, I mean, it's insane. Nobody understands what goes into a contract. Nobody. Oh, so yeah, it, it's it's true. Oh, yeah, you don't understand. And like you, I mean, I was, I was, um, you know, this is something else uh, being recorded, but um, I, 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 I was in Asia for 16 years teaching. So I, I'm, I was, you know, I was at a, I was at a hospital, a teaching hospital, and I was teaching uh, uh, doctors and surgeons. So um, I know the kind of work that you do, and it's, uh, it's, you know, the, the, that's a really hard job. If you're a really good teacher in Asia, I mean, that's, that's a hard and stressful friggin' job I did for 16 years. Medical English, um, I had medical English is really difficult because, again, people wouldn't understand that you have to teach, like, so many different things to do with, like, medical English. So even yeah, a, lot of, a lot of it was, course, lot of it was journals. <laughs> yeah, because journal submissions. Uh, mo most journal time, submissions. Uh, medical, medical terms are of Greek origin, so it is difficult for, every, for everyone to actually yeah, you know, and uh, understand and... Uh, Pronouns. So, uh, for example, know, that, okay, variation guys. Of, that variation of COVID, Omicron, how, how sure. do you pronounce it? Because, wait a minute, Gus, 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 wait a minute. Uh, guys, I know what you're talking about. Sorry, dude. Wait, I'm just going to say I, I teach plastic surgery or the various forms of cosmetic surgery, right? And the, the, the names. Some of the names of these surgeries took me two to three days to master uh, phonetically. So, like, you know, isolating each of the syllables, ensuring which, like, syllable was stressed. Because, like, some of these words, uh, I mean, you know what I mean, some of you guys, like, uh, what is it, rhino, plastology, like, the, the nose job. You, you need to know all of the technical terms for, like, the boob job, the arse, everything. You know what I'm talking about. and. Wow, that is the hardest medical English you can ever teach. Anyone can feel free to contradict me. If anyone's a doctor, oh. or a, feel free to contradict me. That's the most difficult language. Plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery, stuff, sorry. It, it's impossible, some of that shit, man. Google yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The words, wow. The thing, the, you know, what I, what I really did a lot is I taught the classes and they had a good understanding of the, of the pronunciation. The thing is, is that their journal submissions kept getting rejected. And then I would, what would happen is I would make the corrections and they would get accepted to the medical journals if it was, if it was good research, right? But the, the problem is, is that their boss, their boss, who's not a native speaker, would override my English and put those old incorrect, um, uh, uh, that incorrect language back in it and then submit it. And then my, my student would come back to me and say, how come it got rejected again? I'm like, because your friggin' boss just overrode me. So I was not oh, having to deal with the pride of, of the, uh, 
the uh, prep professors. I was teaching like assistant professors and students. So it's, it's a hard job because there's a lot of politics in it as well. You know, but anyway, I'm, I'll shut up. I'll, you know, Ghost, I'm Ghost, sure. Ghost, wait a minute. I've had an assistant professor as a boss, and I've also taught assistant professors, right? And, dude, there can be some of the biggest bloody plebs going. Honestly, like, so, like some of them, the way they act, like it's ridiculous. Uh, weird. We have a guest, uh, Sajoshi Nakabozo, uh, the second year silent. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, that Joshi. Oh, he's come up. He's not speaking. Oh, he's got his hand up. He might have been rubbed. He might be busy, huh? Oh, he's pop tart. Well, he's pop tarts. Uh, Michael's come in. Finn might be guys. He lives in a trailer, and normally, like five nights out of like seven, he has pop tarts. I don't know what you call them in America. There's some obviously different name for what we call pop tarts in the UK, and they're probably not as good as what we eat. But no doubt, Finn is eating them. Uh, wait a minute, uh, Giannis. What about Germany getting knocked out of the World Cup, dude? <laughs> 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 Sorry, German. Uh, there was a time at uh, uh, yesterday's games that both Spain and Germany were about to. Get their asses kicked, but uh, you know, and Belgium, and Belgium went out as well. <laughs> I watched that last night. Belgium. Croatia. I mean, oh. I mean, come on, man, you are <laughs> what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Plebs, plebs. I mean, come on, <laughs> dude. I am, Australia. Uh, I am quite quite surprised. Yeah, I was, I was about to say that that uh, Australia and Japan uh, have hey, been yeah. doing. A yeah. really good job. Yeah. P- P- Big old Rama. Good eye, Rama. I know he, he probably fell asleep listening because he fell asleep hosting the other night. <laughs> I don't know if anyone was there. Rama fell asleep hosting. And we continued for like three hours. <laughs> Wait a minute. But uh, Rama, I'm so happy Australia's through. How cool. Like back in the day, man, like Tim Cahill like, was one of my like, favourites. Like if you've never... If you didn't like Tim Cahill at Everton, like 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 you didn't have to support Everton, but if you didn't like this player, man in midfield, man, he was classic. He was amazing for Australia. Uh, yes, sir, Gus. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm at work. I got to run, but I'll return when I'm drunk tonight and more sedate. The other part is oh. is I'm gonna turn on some uh, some wedding present. George Best. That's what I'm gonna listen to next. You guys have a good one. So Gus, I just care. turned I the f- fuck yeah. out of my mouth on this pop tart. Fuck, that <laughs> shit is so hot. Oh, such a clown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys and girls, it's time for the Rack FM Fuck Us Hour. <laughs> Finn, everyone, come and man. Finn, what about everyone? What about your man, El Chepi? Finn, you missed El Chepi. Uh We have breaking news from the circus tent. Let's go to Lil Gaines and see what's going on. (laughs) That was actually Michael, bro. (laughs) (laughs) We've got some breaking news from the content. Let's go over to Michael. How you doing, Michael? (laughs) (laughs) It is so fucking early for this right now. Oh, my God. I know my girl is like still sleeping and I'm outside yelling like a clown. My neighbors are like, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) Setting fires, Finn. Setting fires. Sorry, Sajoshi. Nagabozo. Second year silent. I forgot. Dude, we're setting fires everywhere. Who cares? Who fucking cares, man? I don't care. Every time I hear that clown music, I start juggling. So just know that it's very distracting. Oh, can you believe? Wait a minute. How, How did this happen? Like, Gus just left, and Amanda came. And I'm sure, like, Amanda and Gus have, like, just met at the... Amanda, we are waiting for Gus to leave. What's going on there? Like, why oh, funny. Gonna... I see what you're saying. If they're on, like, in the same room on on phones, you'll hear that echo. I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> weird, guys. Weird. <laughs> hey, girl. You know what? I'm joking, said, Amanda. Who just said, said hey, girl? Look at this. I don't know what... That was Finn. <laughs> Sup, girl. Finn. Sup, bitch. 
Um, I'm not Monday, sure. you saying the B Monday, word? Oh. Games. Let let's uh, let's just review how many F words have been said and C words on this space by yours truly. We actually just today is our kid's first day of dance class, and we had to have a little chat with her yesterday about the difference between what she can say when she's cold chilling at the crib and what she is allowed to say out in public because those are two two totally different things like we basically just talk to her like an adult and shit I'll, if she's bugging me i'll tell her to like get the fuck away like get the fuck out of here and shit and so we gotta like make sure that and she understands that she knows she's like i know that i know what i can say i'm like oh, you're six you don't know shit so listen All right, you know what forget it get the fuck out of here I'm eating my pop tart. I'm eating my pop tart. Perfect. Yeah, so, so um, Fridays, yes. Fridays are going to be a little busy for me doing the uh, the dance class thing. But <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, my daughter is currently swimming at the moment, so she can't hear me. But usually, when I pick up the phone, I'm like, "What's up, bitch? What's up, bitches?" Amanda, what was Miami like? Obviously, if I was going to ask you, are you back home? But you're obviously back home. What was Miami like? Did you enjoy? I am, you met Sheridan, you met Ghost, right? It was great. I am not home, actually. I'm going home tomorrow. But um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I wish I was actually there today because there's a really awesome <clears throat> Dowathon happening. And I really wish I could have been there. But um, yeah, it was really, it was good. I mean, it was not a lot of people, obviously. Like there were three major crypto conferences happening and I wish they would have all been at the same place. They were all in different locations. So that was kind of annoying. Like we should have just all been like Miami web three <clears throat> all together. I think that would have been better. So yeah, collaboration, that's sh- major oversight, but um, it was okay. I mean, you met, you met Sheldon and you met Gus, right? You met some of the uh, rack, rack friends, didn't you? I did. You know, I actually met a lot more racks too. Like whom? Like whom? Um, Same as my summer. Like whom? Not like who? So like the clip. a couple, yeah, a couple of the people that run Stash, and then <clears throat> I don't remember all their names. Sorry. Hey, um, speaking <laughs> of Stash, did you did y'all go claim your Stash of the day today? It's the homie Gooch, or Gucci go Man. Do it soon. Gucci Man quotes, <clears throat> and if you hold five Gucci Man quotes and you submitted your wallet, you can actually get yourself. A Kong before they mint Kong's dongs. Wait a minute, Finn. You've just reminded me. I'm pretty. I'm pretty pleased with the with the dong that I got. So wow. I, I think you will be too. I saw a bong dong. Uh, the one I got. He's he's sad. He's got tears in his eyes. And then when you look down, you can see why uh, his Finn. dong is clearly Finn. tied in a knot. Finn, it is a Giannis, long, What's up? Long slong Kong. Kong Dongs? No, Long... Sh- say it again? Long Shlong Kongs. It's Shlong, long man. Shlong Kongs. Okay, oh, I yeah. got Long. He hasn't got the Shlong. Yeah. Finn, he hasn't got so my Kongs got his Long Shlong tied in a knot, and he's crying because I, I would imagine <laughs> that if he tried to do anything with it in that state, it would probably hurt. Wow, well, Finn, you just give me... I back. need to, to get home and get mine as well. Uh, yeah, you got time. You got time. It just opened up, and then uh, I don't think the oh, actual Finn. mints until Finn. Sunday. Wait a minute, John. Giving you thoughts of all those dongs, all those long, long cold nights, yeah. <laughs> cuddling up next to dongs. <laughs> These nuts. So what are we talking about? All right, about, cool. So uh, Wait a you're having a down marathon. These guys uh, are burning down. What minute. are we doing? Am I getting real? I'm getting rogue, Donna. I'm sure I'm getting rogue, you all. No, we hear you. Right, okay. We hear, we you. hear you. Finn, Finn. We hear you. Finn gave me flashbacks there. Finn. Stay with that. us. Finn. Did... Okay. Does he hear us? He might not hear us. Finn, did I... Robo, can you hear us? <sighs> Hello, Robo. You there? Don't... Wait a minute. If you can I, hear me, I can't, you're me. I can't hear Robo anymore. If you're rogue me, I'll kill you. Don't... Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't hear, hear him anymore either. Here, I don't, I don't pull, hear him. Pull me up. Nah, me up as a you're rugging me. No, I'm not. I'm not. Save it. 
No, I'm not having it. I, I, I don't hear, I don't hear Rogan. <laughs> Let's play his national anthem. No. <laughs> Thanks for checking out another episode of the Ether. That was part two of the two part Rack FM number nine, Dub Dub G O Dub G A, Wooga Go Wooga. Recorded on Friday, December 2nd, 2022. For TerraSpaces.org, I'm Finn. Thanks for listening. And if you want to keep listening, head on over to TerraSpaces.org slash donate and show some support. Now with Spark IBC enabled. Waking up like a basement dweller Stepped out the door and heard racists yelling 2020, what an ugly shit show Staring at the fucking Rick Roll from the get-go Looking outside, the whole state's on fire The fuck do you expect when you embrace the liars And replace the writers with AI just like us Emaciated models killing bright birds First in, last out, picture me rolling The worst time to cash out, so what you holding? The Merc's gonna cash cow, country stolen Drooling over chicken like the goose is golden Trying to be so full Spitting that molten Lava from the bottom of the caldera I'm hot and gonna put it in a bottle And offer it to the god who hit the gas full throttle Blasting off in a rocket The many people who will, will see things happen to them That are in their favor So someone's looking over me That's a, that's a fascinating phenomenon When that happens And when you analyze those situations, what you find is, is that we as humans simply have a profound inability to understand statistics and probability. Stitching these writings, living that life like, who would have guessed you turn out this nice, right? Avoiding stress, that's the motherfucking secret. Print that shit on a motherfucking leaflet. I'm just an asshole hooked on the bricks. Looking at the rectangles, damn, they kind of thick. We've gone through a whole lot of kings here. Cutting off heads just to bring cheer Getting all fired up, Tiger King, line them up When you give an arm and a leg just to try the junk On some first time buyer's luck Alexa, set a reminder and remind me to buy a bunch And put your hands up if you fuck this year And keep them in the air if you're picking up the spare And put your mask on just to go outside Looking at the planet about to downsize So climate change will not make Earth Basically, every other coastal city that we've spent thousands of years building uh, in the, since the dawn of civilization. Ten spaces.